couple losses last week. Uh, Florida State lost to Wake Forest. NC State lost to Clemson. And both teams are trying to look to rebound. And first one getting to uh, Florida State, and they got a big-time problem that we're going to address they got to fix, and that's going to be special teams. And you look down at kicker Ryan Fish, 34 for nine on the year, uh, 44%. And he hasn't made a kick over 30 yards. That's his long of the year. And this is starting to become a real problem for how Florida State starting to you know, move the ball down. It's like you're starting to see him having to go for it on fourth down because they don't have confidence in the kicking game. Uh, there's been a, that was a possession against Wake Forest. Can't remember exactly when it was. I want to say like late third or early fourth quarter where, you know, a field goal would have probably been a good idea to do it just to try to claw back in the game. But they didn't have the confidence to put Fitzgerald on the field. And that's going to – I think that's starting to catch up to him. I was able to go 4-0, you know, with – you know, with the kickers' deficiencies, but now it's starting to affect the coaching aspect of the game. And, you know, if you go back to the Boston College game, there was a scenario early in the game where they went for it on fourth and nine. And I was like, why why, why go for it on fourth and nine? You just, you know, you're already up. You just had a turnover. You know, go put some points on the scoreboard. And I knew kind of right then that, you know, Florida State special teams in trouble where, you know, in those particular type of possession, you ain't got enough confidence in the kicker to just go and get the three. So, Florida State's really going to have to, uh, you know, clean up that. And then you got to, you know, talk about the the lack of discipline. It looked like the team kind of took a little step back. Uh, last year, you know, they were they were a gritty football team, but, you know, they still made their share of mistakes when it came to penalties and stuff like that. And through the first four games, they really did a good job of cleaning up. They didn't shoot themselves in the foot too much. But against Wake Forest, there was so many times where they, you know, would have a penalty or, you know, run on first down, put them behind the sticks. And Florida State's offense ain't quite good enough, excuse me, yet to uh, be able to, you know, do something like that. So they really got to, you know, improve in that area. Maybe it was a, you know, they're, they were ranked in the top 25 for the first time in a long time. Uh, maybe the pressure was on a little bit, you know, higher expectations. I don't know. But, you know, I, I do think they're going to get that turnaround versus NC State. I think that, you know, this is maybe a wake-up call for them that's going to, you know, do, do them favors later on in the season. And, you know, I fully expect a more disciplined Florida State team. Uh, and keeping up with a new receiver stepping up here, Michael Pittman was kind of the big, you know, receiver that stepped up uh, against Wake Forest. One had uh, 85 yards on the day. And, you know, Jordan Travis is uh, – he's put up very good stats. I thought he looked a little shaky against Wake Forest on some possessions. Like, you know, one possession he had moved the ball down the field with ease, and the next possession it kind of looked like he was stumbling a little bit. So – I don't know, maybe it was a little inconsistent game for him, not one of his better games, but, you know, Jordan Travis has made leaps and bounds improvements since he's been there. And then, you know, Jared Burst kind of played a little sparingly against Wake Forest, but he, you know, has some big plays for him. But uh, I still think Florida State is a very solid team. They're definitely going to, you know, win at least six games, go to ball. I still think they're going to win. My prediction is going to be about nine games for them. Uh, they do face a very good team in NC State, and, you know, NC State's a very good offensive team, you know, led by Devin Leary. And you got, you know, Thayer Thomas, you know, the lead receiver for him, 24 catches, 301 yards. Uh, I thought against Clemson I expected a, a little bit more competitiveness from them. I mean, they did have a 10-6 to 6 lead going, you know, late in the second quarter. But when they came out of halftime in the third quarter, they ended up going down 30-13, to 13, you know, before they battled back and made a, a closer game than it should have been. And I just think this team – in my opinion, is this very, a very uh, average team, probably a top 15, 20 team that somehow got ranked in the top 10. I don't, I think they'll win nine or 10 games in the ACC, but I don't view the ACC as one of the uh, strongest conferences in the world. But, you know, as long as they got Devin Leary, you know, their, their offense going to be more than capable of getting the job done. He's got no problem, you know, swinging the ball down the field. He don't really make a whole lot of bad choices with the football. And, I think, you know, Florida State, they had to go to Clemson, a hostile environment. They got like a 30 some game home win streak down there. You know, this game's going to be in their environment nighttime. Yeah, their fans are going to be really into it. So Florida State's got their work cut out for them. Uh, if I'm trying to predict the outcome of this game, I don't even know who. I, I kind of want to lead towards Florida State and think that they can, you know, I know they're, they're coming on the road, but I think they can somehow get the job done, but I think NC State certainly, you know, is more than capable of getting this job done at home. They're, they're, uh, 